Hello from your favorite artist electronist, Mr. Kutov here. Uh, last time I said that I will uh, continue to use this MOSFET that uh, I'm holding in my hand right now. So instead of uh, this uh, big one here, I switch it with the uh, SMD one here. Also with this power supply, which is uh, ATX power supply, when I'm powering it in. Yeah, you see? It's uh, quite an old power supply, very old, uh, but it's still running. I actually is having a very nice history about it, but uh, I will not get into it because it's too much dark stories. It was a very good argument to use this uh, new power supply for the new tests that I'm doing here, especially for this bigger and fatter MOSFET. It is delivering way more amperage comparative with my isolation transformer that I had before, which was probably delivering maximum one amp or, or something very close to one amp, around uh, one amp, because the wire was quite... Uh, uh, seen uh, on that transformer and the transformer itself was quite small while this one is delivering this table here is for other power supplies from this uh, company that made uh, different values of power supplies probably here and I, I'm having that 230 so we will follow this uh, to 5 volts 23 amps and for 12 volts 9 amps 23 amps for the 5 volts theoretically practically I don't know uh, if I will ever be able to to suck uh, 23 amps from this uh, at 5 volts uh, I have no idea yet um, but it will be interesting to to be able to suck even uh, 10 amps from it uh, so uh, this is how it's working when I'm powering. Uh, I cut a little bit of uh, this metal here and I, I linked this uh, uh, 6 volts, I believe it is. Uh, this is a light bulb, a very old light, light bulb. <laughs> I put some um, isolation, this kind of isolation and this kind of black uh, isolation first and then some this kind of isolation after on top of that. And then I, I put some string and, and link it here and it, it is not moving anymore it's very stable uh, here uh, and it's linked to five volts this was uh, actually for six volts and i'm powering it from five volts and it's uh, pretty bright pretty okay um i don't have that many this remain from a lantern or from a, you know uh, from a very old lantern i have a couple of them two or three or four probably <laughs> i don't have many of them but it's it's kind of interesting it's kind of nice uh, to have a let me power it again to have a uh, light indicator <laughs> for this power supply. That's it. Uh, this is its uh, its only role here. Uh, also, these wires that are dangling here are not very safe. Uh, again, this is, and also you you can see it's, it's having a lot of cutting cutted wires and only one single cord and probably this one and that one uh, to f future uses uh, because all those very long wiring and a lot of them were very annoying uh, to work with. You know, uh, so uh, actually I did this uh, cutting procedure. Uh, a very long time ago. This is a worked power source for many, many projects that I had. Uh, like I said, it's having a very interesting history. Uh, the biggest usage and the, the first usage, probably it was the main usage for this, was for a monitor that I had, an LCD monitor that it's a brick power supply. If you remember, they were bricks power supplies in the past that were powering the, the monitors, the LCD monitors. And that uh, brick power supply, after many years of usage, uh, shit itself, it died. And then I got with it in, in my hands to a repair shop here in my city. And that one, uh, that guy uh, gave me another brick. And I came home and in a couple of hours, the new brick that uh, the repair guy gave me, uh, shit itself got broken. But uh, it was, in a sense, it was a lucky uh, thing, even if I paid a little bit of money. But uh, I learned with that occasion uh, to look more closely on the labels or to get uh, voltages from every power supply that I'm having because I didn't know what power supply was the original uh, brick was giving and uh, the, the new guy that uh, he gave me that sh very shitty power supply uh, when I looked more closely and with more attention on it it was uh, outputting 12 volts and immediately after it broke after I I wanted to, to throw it in his head uh, that new power supply then I realized I can make my own power supply from a, a ATX uh, power supply uh, like, like this one and this is the history uh, and it worked if the original brick from that monitor uh, uh, kept me uh, a couple of years uh, this one also a another couple of years uh, uh, i use it and uh, powering my my monitor uh, that's why you can see here it's a little bit scorched here is overheated uh, especially on the 12 volts uh, rail here which is it got black you, you can see here is a little bit black uh, it got overheated uh, from probably most probably from that monitor when it was powering it some contacts were not quite right there and probably they sparked and they get heated up and etc and uh, yeah uh, that's this is the history of my power supply and uh, this is what i'm using right now for these new experiments that i'm having here. Uh, this is a little update with the transistor that i changed it uh, for the moment uh, so right now i'm getting five volts through this wire here from this atx power supply and then i'm powering this circuit with my variable power supply there the usual 10 volts 
I did uh, made a little change to this circuit. Uh, actually, I made a lot of changes, but I reverted back. <coughs> and the only change that remained uh, was these two diodes that I took them off uh, from here, from the positive line. I, I actually erased them from here and I put a single line. And actually, I changed this resistor, this 10 kilo, which is back again here. I, uh, I actually changed the potentiometer to a 10 kilo too, in the hope I will get to 1% and 99% or 0 and 100%, you know. But it didn't work like that at all, uh, because every time I was changing, especially this 10 kilo resistor, yes, if you can change this resistor, you can get lower, but it all became extremely unstable, uh, lower than 10%. And higher than 90% or 88%, something like that. Very, very unsta unstable. And very finicky to, to actually find the point. It's, uh, it's very trembling, it's very insecure. Uh, at least the waveform that I was seeing on my oscilloscope. Uh, and only on, on uh, even influencing the, a little bit uh, after, like 12 or even 15%, uh, it was still influenced by the, that instability. After that, it was smooth, uh, linear, uh, up to 85, 88% uh, like that. So I, I give up changing this resistor and I, I put it back pretty much, but these two diodes, I took them off because they, uh, without them, I'm getting that uh, 10% and not 20% like before. Before I was having all the time 20% and let me actually demonstrate it. Let me put my oscilloscope on the output. That's the output and uh, open right now is at this end here. You see it's here and I cannot turn it more. And then I will rotate it like that. And it's showing there 88% of the cycle, okay? And now when I'm turning it this way, I think and it's a very stable 10%, very good. Uh, I'm getting the exact same behavior here on the output. Uh, exactly, exactly this 10% and 88%. So this is the only little detail that I changed. But actually, in reality, I changed a lot, a lot of resistors. Even, uh, even these ones here, which are this one, this one here, I changed it uh, two or three times. Uh, this 10 kilo here uh, that is going to this uh, potentiometer, I changed it like 10 times probably. Uh, to, to, to find out, to understand, uh, until I understood that lower than this value is uh, becoming unstable. And the conclusion after I, I made all, all of these uh, changes, I concluded and why I give up and I put back my ten, this original 10 kilo is because is the stability of the circuit, first of all. First of all. Uh, and second, I understood or I, I get it. Uh, this circuit is kind of limited to this 10% uh, limit. The minimum is 10% and the maximum is that 88 and that's it. But it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter if it's to 1% or to 99% because after all this is a bloody testing circuit and is highly hackable and I can intervene in, inside and, and I can change something if I really want and I can uh, uh, hack, hack the hell out of it and uh, that's how I like it <laughs> this is the only reason I like it you know uh, this is the only reason I'm keeping it so this is my 10 volts that is powering all this circuit that you are seeing here and here is the waveform actually you can see the Vmax uh, voltage peak to peak here uh, 9.6 and something and uh, the, the cycle which is most important for this thing. So that's it. I, I kind of solved that 20% mystery that was the lowest duty cycle was 20% and now it's 10% with this little modification that I did here with these two diodes that I took them out and changed them with this uh, yellow wire. So basically I leave this, uh, this uh, was biasing for some reason, for some purpose, the original circuit to that 20%. And the guy, the American dude that gave me this circuit, probably he didn't know about it or uh, he forget about it, uh, who knows, who knows. Uh, but, uh, I, well, I solved his problem. <laughs> okay, that's it for this part with this circuit. The next thing is, I, I got uh, two suggestions in my last two movies to, to make a 555 uh, PWM circuit instead of this one with the comparator. Again, it really doesn't matter how low or how high I can get with the PWM. All that matters is to, to get a little bit of PWM and to, to, to really test what, what is going on here uh, with, the, with the MOSFET gate. Uh, that's it. And even if it's not perfect, uh, definitely this is not a perfect one, but it's good enough for testing uh, for my purposes. I actually build, if you see there in the back, and I will show you, this is a PWM circuit with a 555 and with a scrapped MOSFET. I, I use an oversized MOSFET. I believe with smaller ones uh, could have worked as well. Uh, that's the 555 there. All right, I forgot the 10 volts that was powering this circuit here. And I, I was talking while I was filming here. I put 10 volts here while I specified very clearly. 5 volts, motherfucker, don't put, <laughs> don't put, and for this circuit as well. But this circuit can take it, can take a little bit more voltage. But this motor, uh, it couldn't, and it literally smoked out. The thing is that I put it back, <laughs> and now I have to discomplete it again, only to show you. So it's having this uh, very interesting uh, thing on the top here. I'm not completely sure what is that. Uh, my guess is that is uh, for balancing for some sort of balancing. Here is the commutator, uh, which I should clean it a little bit. And this is the, the cap that is holding a tiny little bit of circuitry. Uh, this is the brush here, and this is another brush. And you can see probably how uh, eaten both they are. They are very, very eaten. You see, yeah, they have a tiny little bit. It's practically is 
is uh, reaching the, the metal there when, uh, when it's turning. But it's still having a little bit of, of uh, this material that it's not dead yet. Before this uh, capacitor that you are seeing here, this, which is, uh, uh, this is brand new what you are seeing here. But before it was having this one, which uh, I believe the shape of it is looking like it's a tantalum capacitor. And this tantalum capacitors are polarized. They have a positive and a negative. And here is where it burned. And literally it uh, come out some smoke and um, the plastic beneath uh, got burned a little bit. And showing me exactly which uh, component was burned. I was a little bit scared because when I see the smoke, I thought it's from the from the coils. Uh, I, actually, I did the test and it's working fine now after I changed the, this capacitor. But I wanted to show you the inside of it, you know, how it's looking inside. This single wire and is linked here on this point and then on this point. I know it's, you cannot understand too much, but uh, trust me on this. Here and there. From here, it's going like this through these two brushes and through until this point. And between here and here is a capacitor. And here and here, between the two power points from this wire, actually, uh, is another capacitor. It's a bit weird. <laughs> it's a bit weird, but, but probably it's uh, helping to start the motor or something because uh, it's having this uh, is because it's a, a little bit too heavy. Probably I'm not sure. Yeah, enough about this because this movie is not about this motor. I, I blew it off and now I, I repair it. So let me assemble it and uh, show you that it, indeed it is working again. All right, so this is low speed here. And I'm increasing. Yeah. Uh, this LED here, this green LED, in the minimum here. The LED, it got dimmed, and uh, now when I'm increasing is uh, to very to highest brightness. So yeah, uh, so this is the PWM with the 555. In my last two videos, he suggested me to use a 555 PWM, which I have actually, and I can borrow this board here. I can unplug this and uh, plug uh, something else, uh, but uh, or I can make another board. It's no problem for me. But the idea is that. It really doesn't matter how close to zero or how close to 99 I'm getting with it. What, all that it matters is the fact that it's um, doing some PWMing in the process, you know, in the when I'm turning the, the knob, that I can change it from a minimum to a maximum, even if that is 10% uh, cut off from, you know, from the minimum and from the maximum. So now I put my oscilloscope here on this resistor, uh, here on this point and on this point. Here is the drain and this is the source. All right, so let's see the waveform. When I will plug this in, I will... I'll make a very quick test because uh, they are heating up quite uh, rapidly, quite fast, both of them, the MOSFET and the resistor, but in about one minute. So I will have time to speak and to show. So now I'm getting the 89 or 90% if you want, the cycle there, the potential meter. And when I'm changing it like this, I'm getting this 11% duty cycle. Yeah, now it's stable. So you see, uh, duty cycle is 11 and then I'm changing it from here to 89 percent so these are the two uh, margins of this circuit uh, the limits i proved that by taking those two diodes out uh, these two diodes out i can get to the that 10 percent limit uh, even on this side on this side of the circuit not only here probably here i was getting before 10 or 11 percent but here i wasn't so now i'm i am having it i can read it from here as well all right i got this little uh, device which is a pwm driver creating a pwm waveform and it's having three channels, and you can see them here. Uh, channel one, PWM one, two, and three, uh, with its respective ground. But I have a lot of bad uh, things to say about it. Uh, the seller that I got it from uh, didn't give me too much spe good specifications about it. Uh, it is having a lot of problems, a lot of issues on the back of it. Actually, I have some pictures about it, uh, more clear, more detailed. But you can clearly see here along these pins is uh, like a long, uh, you see, a spill, and here it, it gathered. Here and also some salt also on those pins there uh, here as well on the top a lot of salty substance I, I will clean it with my knife or with my needle I actually clean there it was a, a blob here is another blob here is another blob of this salt which I just uh, get it off right now uh, here is another blob as well uh, also the the screen is very scratched when the screen is off uh, this is powered so you can change the voltage from I believe uh, starting with three volts or something like that up to 35 volts so right now I'm powering with 10 volts you can see it there another problem that is having is when it's lit up, you can see those black segments of the display uh, and only from a certain angle, a little bit like this. This is made for a certain position, this LCD, uh, so uh, to, to be viewed, not from all the angles like I am viewing it. You see, it's uh, weird. It's very weird from, from this angle that I'm uh, in, even directly 90 degrees or perpendicular like this. It's made to be viewed from a little bit from the top like this, probably. Uh, so that this is a bit annoying and I, I really didn't like it. This white... Let me unpower it to see. Uh, when I when I receive it, I didn't know what the hell is this, and it turns out uh, it's a plexiglass and a LED or multiple LEDs inside. Probably it's only one because I only see these two wires uh, or pins there, and it's actually the the back 
the backlight for this LCD. I wonder if the LCD is is working without without this backlight. This is for the duty cycle channel, uh, changing the channel uh, one, two, and three, and their respective outputs there. And this is the frequency. How this uh, display is working here on the top, it it should have show me frequency actually here. So this is one kilohertz what I'm having here. I can tell you exactly because I'm looking here when I'm probing and you can see the frequency right there, the third one, you see, one kilohertz. And so this here is the, uh, the frequency. They say in degrees Celsius and voltage, but probably this uh, little LCD was used for something else other than this. It's not specifically made for this thing. You can clearly see uh, degrees Celsius and the voltage there, but it should have been written there hertz, hertz, uh, like I'm having it here, you know. So that's the top side. Uh, this. This square that you are seeing here, imagine that he, he, this is a square, D1, is it means duty. Duty, the channel that is selected right now, duty cycle 1, uh, is 99%. And let me probe it. And here is, as you can see, PWM1 here. And you can see it here, it's saying it is indeed, it's confirming my oscilloscope that it is 99%. And also the, the oscillogram, the, the spikes to the 0 volts, you see, is mostly on the, on the 10 volts there, VPP is 10 volts, and then down to negative a little bit. I really like it. Let me change it here. Uh, it's nice when... When I'm uh, holding my finger on this uh, button is actually uh, counting down. Uh, this is, here imagine another square. This is the percentage of the duty cycle per channel that is using. So transmit data and receive data probably from a serial uh, port. Uh, probably some chip here, uh, probably this chip is getting uh, some data. You, you can read or write probably a connection to your PC or something or with another chip. Uh, aside, making abstraction of this uh, spilling that you can clearly see uh, especially on these pins here. Uh, this is laser uh, erased, the markings of this chip. I did find the actual picture, the original picture uh, from other sellers, and I, I got the number of this. Not cool to have it like this. I have uh, 20 pieces of this, so HT1621B from Holtec. This is the LCD driver, which I have 20 of these chips in my arsenal. I only managed to properly use one with Arduino and with a very obscure library from the online source. Uh, of libraries that they have there. But other than that, what I really want to, to use it for is drive this chip from a PIC microcontroller. This chip is specifically um, made to drive multiplex LCDs. I have a couple of them, this LCDs, and uh, I, I bought this chip driver that you are seeing it here specifically for, for those. And I, I couldn't uh, get outside of uh, Arduino uh, world. You know, I can I can make it with Arduino, but uh, it's more interesting when you have a PIC microcontroller. And probably this is exactly what it is. It, it's probably a PIC microcontroller that is holding all the data, all the data that is uh, shown on the screen and doing the PWMing and everything. Uh, here is uh, pro most probably a 3.3 volts uh, voltage regulator, this one. It is having a, a funny name. I, I never came across it. It's, it's this name, SAOPT8233. Probably that 33, it means 3.3 uh, volts. 2047 hash F, I don't know. I, I never ca came across a over this kind of regulator, uh, voltage regulator, but it looks like it is one to me. And here are two transistors and uh, a more powerful uh, resistor here, and here probably another transistor, yeah? Uh, and that's it. And this is the name, three-channel PWM generator. It's uh, official name of it. It's very, it's very practical. I think, I think it will be very practical. Uh, also, the, the wiring is very weird. It's a bit weirder than normal. I mean, do you see? I was very confused initially. It's saying here, it's saying here, voltage in positive, and here was voltage in V in negative. I raised, I raised it with, uh, with my knife here. The, the naming, I only leave that sign of negative because these two pins represent the positive, and these two pins and this one as well. You can clearly see a line here, a copper line that is connecting at least these two. I tried to find a connection line between between these two, but it appears they are from other place, uh, not from here. Uh, the, so this, this, and this are the negative which is a common. And this one also is a common with this one because I test them. Originally, when I when I receive it, when I receive this board, I thought, I, I truly thought this V in positive here and this other next to it in this square is the negative. So this is positive, negative, positive, negative. This is how I imagined it should be. And I didn't power anything uh, because it was weird, uh, especially this V in negative. It means a negative voltage that you can probably put here. Who the hell knows? Probably you can make a negative square waves. Probably. I, I have no idea because there is no serious data sheet about this uh, circuitry. Uh, and these little details are not specified anywhere. The seller is specifying something, uh, but is not really complete about it. Usually the square uh, element hole is negative, usually, and I, is an indicative. But he who made it, he totally bypassed all the rules that I know at least and made this square as positive and positive is the same is the same link here and this is negative and negative unbelievable and this one as well and also the negative from uh, from here all these three one two three and also these three holes 
is the same uh, negative uh, or zero volts line. You can collect the positive from its channel, from directly from the uh, from the output, uh, the positive uh, square wave. But the ground, uh, you can collect it uh, from here, from there, from there, whatever, wherever you want. You know, excepting this last two because they are probably some data lines or data pins, transmitics. You see here, transmitics and receivics, uh, and probably it's uh, to communicate with uh, with the uh, serial port on your computer. Most probably, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I should try it someday in the future, <laughs> this little uh, detail to, to cover it. But from what I can observe, uh, I said everything I could say about it, you know. And, uh, it's a little bit shitty how, how I receive it, but it's doing a good job. Uh, I actually like it. And now it's 10%. It, it is remembering the last setting, which is uh, absolutely cool. It's very good. And, and there it is. There is the 10% duty cycle and also the waveform. And let me actually go to 1% here. And this is exactly showing that 1%. It's uh, incredibly good. And also the frequency is very spot on. I didn't use it here. I only uh, receive it. I only tested it. I only uh, find out how to power it because this was a, a little bit of problem. Figuring out how to properly power it. So in the moment you click one of these channels is changing this duty channel. Ch uh, you, you have to read it as duty and channel do, uh, two in this case. And now it's duty and channel one, uh, channel one and it's 1%. Or let's change it as 5%. Yeah. And my oscilloscope is, is uh, perfectly um, confirming what I'm having here when I'm measuring, which is very, very okay. I, I really like it. It's nice that I'm having that 10 volts that I can uh, that I can power it, and that I can receive that 10 volts specific to test my MOSFETs here, and even 20 volts for uh, for this fat one that I'm having. So uh, uh, I think I will use it on 20 volts. This is a very fancy way, and uh, not really necessary right now with this experiment that I'm doing here. When I will get more experience uh, how to properly power test a MOSFET, then I will come back to this little cute board that I'm having here, which a Russian guy actually suggested to me to, to use it, and uh, I'm thanking to him. Uh, very, very good, uh, very good thing. Uh, usually you don't think uh, about these little gadgets, because you I, you get used to, to make circuits like this. Uh, at least I am. It's a little bit uh, nicer. This is more nicer. This is like a, a more beautiful uh, girl on the internet uh, than your wife or your girlfriend that you always work it out uh, home when you do it yourself home. All right. So that's all about this little gadget that I uh, received it yesterday. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so th this is the next test. I already prepared here uh, another circuit schematic in parallel with this. So it's the same thing what I'm having here and here. So here, it doesn't matter what PWM uh, device I'm using. If it's this circuit, if it's my new toy, or uh, a 555 uh, PWM uh, circuit, it doesn't matter what I'm having here. What it matters are these uh, endings or, or uh, terminals, terminal wires, to be able to, to power it to 10 volts, uh, common ground for, for everything. Then uh, a link to the gate of the transistor and a link to the source of the transistor, which represents these two points uh, you can see here. And th those points are exactly these pads, this pad and this pad here, uh, clearly uh, marked, gate and source. And uh, and here on the drain, I have this uh, 1 ohm 50 watts resistor, which you can see it here, and it's powered uh, from my ATX uh, power supply from the 5 volts here. Th this resistor, I named two points for it, this A beginning and B the end of the resistor. Let's say it's beginning and the end, A and B. This is the A point here which is the same with the drain there. I know it's kind of showing is a little D and here is a little S and there should be a G. I should actually mark this resistor with A and B to be a bit more clearer. I marked A, a and B here, A and B, and A is on the same line with, with, the, with the drain. It's the same thing. Good. Now that it's clear, I'm, I'm specifying these uh, little details because I will do a test. The following test will be on the drain and the source of the transistor, so over the, tra uh, the transistor, and the next will be over the resistor, and you will see very interesting uh, behavior and very interesting effect of the PWM. So at this moment, right now, how uh, my oscilloscope probe is hooked up is from A, or the drain, to the source, which is the negative. So uh, my probe is from here to here, is connected, these two points, okay? I, uh, I, I will actually power this line here, because this is already powered with 10 volts. You can see it there, 10 volts all the time. I thought to add an LED here to, to show that this driver is actually powered. When I'm plugging it in, you can see it. What I'm showing you is the duty cycle. So here is 11% duty cycle. So remember, here on the drain and the source, I'm having 11 duty cycle with the potentiometer turned to this point, not on that point. Let me turn it off. And now I will only change this to from here over the resistor. Okay, so here it is. Yeah, this is already warm. So here is the how I connected it on A and B. And let me power it. Now it's powered. And voila. Here the duty cycle is 88%. So it's inversed here from here. Let me turn it off because this will get very quickly very hot with this one ohm resistor. It's, it's already hot right now. As you can clearly see here probably over AB, which is here and here, voltage peak to peak, uh, duty cycle is 10%, while over the drain and source, 
is this 90 percent is what you, we are seeing what i showed you here this is the uh, a little bit of interesting difference in duty cycle where you are probing where you put your probes if you are probing the load resistor you are getting this duty cycle and if you are probing the transistor you, you are getting this duty cycle uh, I, i'm calling it duty uh, duty cycle my american friend he he is strongly disagreeing with me using this duty here yeah probably i should use a duty instead of instead of duty uh, but this remains what i am having here from my earlier experiments before uh, probably i will change it to duty instead of duty but duty is is kind of a catchy name <laughs> you know you kind of remember it uh, so this is my my mark on on electronic field at, at least something to, to to name it you know uh, to get named by me <laughs> of course i'm joking but uh, yeah so th this is the the test that i wanted to show you that here you get one duty cycle percentage and here is the inverse of that the duty cycle that you get on the load is the same with the duty cycle that you get from the pwm from the output reading here and probably i should demonstrate it uh, what it was right now what is the duty cycle that i'm having there is uh is 88 percent well the data is inverse from what i'm having here so uh let me actually change it so right now i'm changing the potentiometer to the other side so now i should have here exactly as on my paper here uh, a b points with duty cycle 10 percent uh, let me power it like this and there it is 11 or 10 and also you can see the, the square wave is quite uh it's quite spiky you know okay so that's on a b and it's exactly as i'm having it here 10 percent and i will have the exact same 10% on this point and this point. This is the output to the gate and this is the negative uh, rail or wire. Let me change the, the probes. All right, so here it is. I changed the probes. Like I said, I put the probes uh, on the output here and on the negative uh, rail and voila, I'm having exactly the same duty cycle here. So this is a, a little bit interesting uh, details about wh where you put your probes, you know, over the load resistor or over the, the transistor because we will have to remember this little detail about this transistor that is inverting the signal in the future experiments, uh, most probably. All right, that's it. Thank you.